Welcome to Bruisers, a podcast about beer, coffee, booze, and bruisers. I'm your host, Rody John, and today we talk to Jeffrey John. We talk all about how he found his way into being a pro wrestler through the world of fashion, the babushka, and so much more. This is such a fun conversation. Jeffrey is absolutely amazing to talk to. I wish we had more time, and we will definitely have him back, obviously. Uh, I've been thinking about having maybe a Fashion Friday. He gives us a little tips. You can, uh, you know, up your game there a little bit if you are a pro wrestling fan. No offense, but the black t-shirts and the gym shorts don't always cut it. So we definitely need a little help when we can get it, and Jeffrey John can maybe help you out with that. Now, while he's helping us out, we can help you out as well with the newsletter. Make sure to subscribe to that it comes out twice a week you get even more information about our guest you get fun facts and you get to find out what's happening with your favorite podcast all about beer coffee booze and bruisers so without further ado here is jeffrey john i would like to welcome a show jeffrey john how are you doing today sir Doing good. How are you? I'm well. So for those listening, kind of uh, paint us a word picture. Where are you at? What's going on around you? So right now I am headed to Cleveland for oh. a Guardians baseball game. Hey, very nice. Yeah, you, uh, you're you in the Columbus area normally, right? Yep, I'm born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. How is that ballpark? I've never actually been to that ballpark. Uh, as far as Cleveland, this will be my first time going. Uh, mm. But in Columbus, we host their uh, the Guardians AAA team, the Columbus Clippers. And Huntington Park is one of the absolute, like, most beautiful baseball parks. Um, it was rated the best baseball park, I think, for a good few years when it wow. first debuted. Yeah, I'm looking at pictures right now of the Cleveland one, and that, I mean, you got a beautiful view of downtown, um, very open air. which from what I remember, because uh, I remember, so I used to work on the ground screw for the Texas Rangers, so one of the guys that was with us went up to Cincinnati, um, and he just kept talking about how, you know, just random pop-up rains would happen, kind of like it does here, but far more up there because there's the lakes and everything. It, I, I don't know if Cleveland is uh, as far in as uh, Cincinnati, but uh, I don't know if the same situation would happen there. Yeah, so uh, Cleveland does sit on Lake Erie. Ah. And, and so it, they do get rain quite frequently. That is always an issue when it comes to the, you know, uh, yeah, the ballparks. <laughs> Which I'm glad here in Texas we finally put a roof on ours. Well, we built a new one, but then we put a roof on. Okay, so what part of Texas do you live? I'm in the DFW area. Oh, okay. I yeah. was just in San Antonio last weekend. Oh, nice. Where were you? Uh, yeah. Who were you working for there? Uh, I wasn't working then. I just went out there to relax, see friends, uh, and then flew back Sunday for GCW in Columbus. I did see you on that show, so that was fun. Well, yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, I mean, speaking of wrestling, let's go all the way back in time. What is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? So, my earliest memory is definitely Attitude Era. Um, mm. That's I was born in 1993, so I was an Attitude Era kid. Uh, mm. Some of my earliest memories, I would say, is definitely I was I want to say probably the earliest I can think of is probably like. The Rock Austin WrestleMania 15, right. even like maybe be, even maybe before that, because I I remember watching Eddie versus Ray at Halloween Havoc. Oh yeah. So I was definitely more into WCW mm -hmm. because of Sting at the time, and then WWE just kind of like got all of my attention when The Rock really like made a name <laughs> for himself. So I mean. In that area, the, you know, in Ohio, what all wrestling did you get? And I mean, I guess like the other question is, how did you start realizing that there was more wrestling out there? So I didn't really discover any wrestling in Columbus outside of WWE until I started wrestling. I had no idea that there was like any wrestling outside of WWE and then WCW and TNA. 
I just kind of knew that there was on TV, but I had no idea like it was as big as it was when I first started wrestling. Um, there was a promotion that used to run up in Cleveland that I used to see on like our local Fox Sports channel. And I still to this day can't remember the name of it. And I've been told the name of it like 10 times. But it was back when, it was like back in 2010, 2011, when Matt Cross did Tough Enough. Uh, and there was, so, and I remember it because when he, uh, when he got eliminated from Tough Enough, he had made his return to that promotion. And that's all they talked about was him on Tough Enough. Yeah, I remember, oh man, Tough Enough, the multiple versions of Tough Enough have always been, I'm still kind of surprised they don't do more of that, especially considering who owns them now. And, you know, they, you know, same company does, you know, owns the UFC and they're doing the ultimate fighter again. Why would you not bring back tough enough? Because you put more eyeballs on the business, you get to know more about these people and love them as humans. And then you get to cheer them on, you know, even more so whenever they do actually go into the ring. I 100% agree with that. I think if they bring back Tough Enough and give it that ultimate fighter feel, that mm. would be absolutely amazing. Maybe maybe they will. Maybe, you know, so Hopefully someone's listening and they're going to be like, you know what, that's a great idea. We do need to bring them back. Yeah. So I read that you started as a model and then once you you know, obviously got established there, you went on to really do what you really wanted to do, which is pro wrestling. How did the modeling thing come first? The modeling was super random. So before I started modeling, I had, uh, I was a club promoter. Oh. And one night, one night after the club was over, I had went to uh, get right food. And while I was waiting in line for food, uh, I had just sparked up a conversation with somebody who was just in line. And then they were a photographer and then they pretty much asked me if I was ever interested in modeling and then ended up doing a photo shoot with them. And then that turned into me talking to other people. Then I got trained in like acting and modeling um, and got signed to the, to an agency. And then from there, I just modeled uh, for like seven plus years. Yeah. So, I mean, so, like, I, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, so like for modeling, I've done pretty much enough that I wanted to do. Uh, I was able to do New York, LA, and Paris Fashion Week. Wow. And then do a bunch of shows here in Ohio. What, uh, for those that have not been a part of that, so my ex girlfriend um, kind of made me watch the uh, Real Housewives of New York, and they would, you know, their certain episodes would be the whole fashion uh, week that happens there. For those that, are not into the fashion world, which, you know, uh, as I've been to enough pro wrestling shows to know that most of the fans of pro wrestling are not. Um, can you kind of describe to us what like the frenzy is, what exactly happens during, you know, fashion week, like how many of these small little shows there are, you know, just kind of walk, walk us through for us that are not fashion people. So I would say any, Anybody that's ever been around wrestling, especially wrestlers who have done WrestleMania weekend, yeah, fashion week is just basically WrestleMania weekend and on the lines of like, you have to be at this show at this time, do this show, then leave, go to this show, then leave, go to this show. It's just the frenzy of like being in fashion week itself. It's the frenzy of doing multiple shows in a week. Mm. And the preparation is just as crazy as it is running a wrestling show. So, that's why whenever I see like wrestling promoters or wrestlers like freaking out the week of a show or like the day before a show, I always laugh because it's like this is nothing new to me because I've been experiencing <laughs> with this. So it's it's just the same old stuff. It's the same industry, different type of entertainment. So in a way, the modeling kind of helped train you to. Have learn the calmness and find your way through the craziness that is, you know, show day. Yeah. It's helped me, you know, adjust being adaptable to any situation that comes on hand, you know, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to a model not showing up. So you got to do like the adjustment to, okay, who's walking at in what order for this designer, because now they have to do, walk for the designer after them. So they have to get to the back, make the, make the uh, dress change real quick and mm -hmm. be like, be able to move at like a hundred miles an hour while also keeping your composure. 
So what, um, so you did runway kind of what is the, I guess the perfect way, because most of us have seen Zoolander. And so we kind of, you know, we all think we have somewhat of an idea what uh, runway modeling looks like. What is kind of the key points that you need to be hitting when you are in fact, you know, doing some runway walking? Uh, well, I mean, the main one, and it's my biggest pet peeve when I watch like fashion shows now, or like <laughs> I see celebrities who don't know what they're doing on the runway and I can pick it out any moment. The biggest thing is don't look down. Mm. And I see it all the time. Now I can't watch a fashion show and like just enjoy the fashion part of it because I'm like, it's the same with wrestling. Like I'm just nitpicking every little thing that they're doing. <laughs> But the biggest thing is when they look down, I get so annoyed. So look, you n never look down, um, you know, keep your chin up, everything like that. It's just just knowing that you're you're a walking mannequin and mm -hmm. you're just showcasing the clothing and you're not the actual um, person that they're there to see. They're there to see the art, the art pieces and they're for the designer. You're just somebody showcasing the design for them. Right. No, I, I love that too, because I love, you said walking mannequin and that's exactly what it is because everyone is there to look at the, you know, like you said, the artwork that they're wearing, you know, some people might be looking at the models depending upon if they're another um, uh, fashion designer and maybe they want them as for their modeling or whatever, but in the long, in the, you know, long and short of it, they're looking at those clothes and, and that is all they really care about. Yeah. And it's something that I did used to enjoy, but it just, once I started wrestling, I just kind of was like, I'm finally doing what I've loved since I was a child. Right. So how did you make that transition and finally get into, or, you know, make the decision of, all right, I've done this, this is fun, but this is not what I ultimately want to do. I need to start getting into the world of pro wrestling. For me, it was when I started working at my current job that I have, like outside of wrestling, like my shoot job. Mm -hmm. um, when I started working there in 2017, I went from, you know, having all of these hard labor, like lawn technician jobs where I'm out in the sun all day to just sitting down in the office. And you get to relax and you get to chill and start putting on a few pounds. So that's kind of what happened to me. I put on a good like 20, 30 pounds. Damn. And I made the decision like, hey, you know, you got to you gotta get yourself back in shape because I was still trying to model and still look my best under clothes when I wasn't. So I was like, started hitting the gym and then I started getting a little better in shape. But then I made the decision, like you can either go back down in weight and continue modeling or put on a few more pounds of lifting and then start wrestling. So I mm -hmm. took the time to actually like spend a good seven to eight months of this straight parkour lifting and setting like, lifting goals mm -hmm. so by like december like christmas of 2017 my goal was to be able to uh bench 225 nice like a good the good eight to ten reps and i was finally able to hit it and once i was able to hit that then i knew like okay if i can set a goal and do that then i can set the goal of becoming a wrestler and starting that so that's what i did i just kind of studied on like what's around ohio who to look for what to look out for um and that's where i found the my base promotion where I trained at, um, which is in Lancaster, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Ohio scene has actually been growing quite a bit. I want to say maybe a little bit before you decided to get, you know, into the the world of wrestling. Uh, I kind of walk us through some of the major promotions that are coming through. I mean, the biggest one off the top of my head, well, obviously, um, you know, uh, Pro Wrestling Revolver. Um, I think OVW's in that area kind of um, walk us through some of what is happening up there in the Ohio area. Yeah. So the so OBW is in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. So they technically aren't Ohio, but the biggest ones in Ohio, as of now, like you said, revolver, um, probably my, one of my favorite places to work for it is be around all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I love AIW. That's right. Um, yeah, they're up there. um, everything that they're doing up there is, I mean, still standing strong. Uh, I'm Sanction Pro, uh, you know, based in Columbus, 